It was championship Friday on the football field for high school teams in Oregon. Fox 12's Nick Krupke was there for the triple header under the Friday Night Lights in Hillsboro. It was a Black Friday where all sales are final, and hardware is what these kids want this time of year. They've been working for it for almost an entire year. How about it? Championship desires from those summer workouts to reality on a weekend to certainly be grateful. It was just how you like it. Number one and number two, 11 1 Westland earned the top seed, even though the Lions' one loss came to unbeaten Sheldon. It was Irish back in week two in West Lynn's own den. They last hoisted a title in 2016. The kids from Eugene last won it all a decade ago. John Eagle's men from the Lynn are a fast breaking bunch. Sam Levitt revved it up with his legs. The senior transferred from Westview, a Wazoo commit so versatile at a night when throwing was suboptimal. The future coup collected 171 yards rushing to his 131 throwing. One of those 27 carries was for 16 yards in the game's first six points. Levitt's long journey also saw him play a season in Utah during the COVID shutdown back home in Oregon. Another quarterback rush shut up Kufi Kawami for the second West Lynn touchdown, 14-0 in the opening quarter. The black and green were money for more in the second. Ben Wingham joined the scoring party, 20 to nothing Lions on their first three possessions. That defense is certainly more than bend and not break. Coached up by Duck Greats and NFL alums like Anthony Newman and Alex Molden, the Lions with pass breakups all night long, outgaining the Irish 400 to 272. Levitt, along with Mark Hamper, the Donnerberg twins, Jake Holmes, Earl Ingle, Jackson Shellstad, and the like are kings again of the 6A Mountain. 23-14 the final as the Lynn is title town again, a second all-time, first in six years. So from Chris Miller to John Eagle, a two-time state champ coaching at Camas High, the Eagle has landed a wonderful spot. Crown them after season one. You know, you're so, you're so deep in the forest, you don't really yeah. quite see the big picture. Yeah. You know, you just kind of work on small things. But uh, uh, what an amazing run by these kids. I, I just, yeah, we thought Westland could be pretty good, and sure enough, they are. So we yeah. are. You know, I've been dreaming about this since I couldn't even tell you when, the second grade. Uh, I never thought it would be at Westland because I've moved my high schools a couple times, but, you know, I couldn't be more than blessed and to be a part of this team and coaching staff, and, you know, I'm ve very thankful. There's a first for everything. The Black Friday triple header began with the first ever Columbia Cup. 18th seed Westview and number 28 North Salem. Grateful to still be playing ball in the secondary bracket as the OSAA split the traditional field of 32 into a pair of 16s. The Vikes hadn't played in the final since tying Grant for it all back in 1963. The Wildcats had never played football this late into the game. Westview took that first lead of the game as Jacob Munley swung it around the right side of the line as everyone had their eyes on that big fish. The bad break for North Salem was the injury to their star running back, Josiah Davis, in the semifinals. TC Manumaliuna and crew are battlers, though. The moon ball from TC to Neil Neifel. That red zone opportunity, though, would be ripped off soon by Aiden Cox, the first of three first-half takeaways for Ryan Atkinson's boys from Rock Creek. He played, of course, the Beavers back in 2001, the Fiesta Bowl. On the very next snap, superstar senior tailback Jordan Fisher did this. The best back in the state took it 88 yards. The first of a five-score day for the Big Fish, who kept on swimming upstream, ran for 417 yards and 36 carries, a career high for the Georgia Peach, who already set the school record for yards with 2,972 this season. Then before the half, more defensive pilfering for the Cats and the Vikes. Jonathan Collier, don't hang up now. A 68-yard pick six for a three-score lead at the break. It was wet, it was wild, it was a 51 to 22 final tally. And a little history as Westview only completed two passes, but that's okay when you can stash it away on the ground, right? The first ever Columbia Cup trophy finds a first home. It may not be the big blue, but it's certainly something to savor for the kids from Westview. who are playing for all those who came before when the school opened up in 1994 along Northwest 185th. Hey man, it's unbelievable. I'm just happy for the kids. They deserved it. And uh, it's all about them and they're gonna remember this for the rest of their lives. So we're pretty excited, but it's all about the kids. We want to give them a great experience. If you ever guys need, ever need Captain, anything from Captain. me, I'm here forever. You got my number, and I got your back for life, okay? Yes, sir. That's the percentage of high school players that go to the go to the NFL. You know, it's just my reminder that if I want to be there, which is my dream, that I have to make the play that less than one percent of the people on this planet can make. And you know, that's just my constant reminder. I believe that we just won. I believe that we just won.
Our coverage of the 5A nightcap between number one Summit and number two Wilsonville is on the way later in the show. The Saturday finals will be here as well for 4A. Tillamook and Estacada, 3A, 2A, and below will be in Cottage Grove, teams like Kennedy and St. Paul. At a wet and rainy, cold and fun, Hillsborough Stadium, Nick Krupke, Fox of Oregon.